For 30 years, the American Dental Association has co-opted with the National Bureau of Standards in research on dental materials. In 1947, the program was enlarged to include the federal dental services. The program includes studies of radiation protection. This has contributed to the publication of handbooks containing the recommendations of the National Committee on Radiation Protection. Of special importance to dentists is Handbook 59, Permissible Dose from External Sources of Ionizing Radiation. Handbook 59 deals with terminology, radiobiological considerations, maximum permissible doses, and recommendations for protection. Also recommended for every dental office is Handbook 60, X-ray Protection. In this handbook, there is a special section on dental X-ray installations. These handbooks are available at small cost from the Superintendent of Documents, Washington, D.C. Every dentist and dental assistant operating X-ray equipment should read these handbooks. Although the use of high-speed film provides the major reduction in radiation to the patient, this picture deals principally with modifications of many dental x-ray machines to provide maximum safety. There are about 80,000 of these dental x-ray machines in use in the United States. Every x-ray installation should be examined to determine whether the patient is receiving a minimum dose of x-rays in making good diagnostic films and whether adequate protection is provided for dental personnel. Let us consider first how the patient exposure may be reduced. This beam of radiation exposes about 10 square inches of the skin at each exposure because this x-ray machine did not have a lead diaphragm that would restrict the beam. One can easily be installed, however. Now the radiation can escape only through the aperture, which determines the size of the useful beam. This beam of radiation is only 2 and 3 quarter inches in diameter, so less than 6 square inches of the skin are exposed. The large red circle shows the area of skin exposure without the diaphragm. The small green circle shows the area of skin exposure with the lead diaphragm. This small change in diameter actually reduces the irradiated area 40%. If you are unable to obtain a lead diaphragm from the manufacturer of your x-ray machine, you can easily make one. In this particular machine, the outside diameter of the lead washer should be 3 inches. 4 pound lead sheet, which is 1 16th inch thick, may be obtained at a plumber's shop. A 3 inch circle is inscribed on it with a compass. The lead disc is easily cut out with a pair of shears. The next step is to determine the diameter of the inner circle. To do this, a line two and three quarter inches long is drawn. This line represents the desired diameter of the useful x-ray beam as it strikes the skin. Find the center of the line. Mark this point S. Erect a line perpendicular at point S. The length of this line, TS, is the length of the target skin distance. Here, line TS is seven inches long because a short cone is being used. Now, measure from the tip of the cone to the point where the lead washer or diaphragm is to be installed. In this instance, the distance is three and one-eighth inches. This diaphragm skin distance, DS, of three and one-eighth inches is laid out on line TS. Now, lines are drawn from T to L prime and from T to L. The red area is a cross-section of the useful beam from the target to the skin. 
the area of radiation will be a circle two and three quarter inches in diameter. At point D, where the lead diaphragm is to be located, draw a line parallel to the baseline. Now, the distance AB represents the diameter of the aperture in the lead diaphragm that will restrict the beam to a two and three quarter inch circle as it strikes the skin. In this instance, line AB measures one and nine sixteenth inches. Now a circle one and nine sixteenth inches in diameter is inscribed in the center of the lead disc. It can easily be cut out with a pocket knife. The lead diaphragm is placed in the X-ray apparatus. About 20% of the dentists use a long cone, the target skin distance being from 12 to 20 inches. This cone has a target skin distance of 15 inches. Again, we note the lead diaphragm is missing, but one can easily be installed. The opening of the lead diaphragm for the long cone is smaller than for the short cone. This is shown by comparing the two drawings and the two lead diaphragms. Another method of determining the diameter of the aperture is to place a cardboard circle of mounted pins in the path of the direct beam at the position where the lead diaphragm should be installed. An exposure is made and the films are developed. The number of pin images within a two and three quarter inch circle are shown on the left. The same number of pins on the cardboard at the right gives the diameter of the aperture. One can expose a cross of films on which is laid some wires and thus determine the area of exposure. The cross on the left shows the radiated skin area without a diaphragm. The right cross shows the reduced area with a diaphragm. The dentist is responsible for safety in the use of his x-ray equipment. Every machine should be examined to see if there is adequate filtration. This new machine does have the proper amount of filter. However, most of the older machines have no added filters and it is necessary to install them. This aluminum disc absorbs much of the less penetrating radiation, the so-called soft radiation represented by the red rays. Otherwise, these rays are absorbed by the skin and cheek and do not reach the film. The glass wall of the X-ray tube and any material through which the useful beam passes filters the radiation to some degree. The amount of this inherent filter varies with the make and model of the X-ray machine. This value can be obtained from the manufacturer. The manufacturer will tell you the equivalent thickness in millimeters of aluminum by which the beam is filtered by one, the wall of the glass tube, two, the housing, and three, the plastic cone. This inherent filter may vary from one quarter to two millimeters of aluminum equivalent. If the inherent filtration is less than two millimeters, then additional filtration in the form of aluminum discs should be added. If you are unable to obtain these aluminum filters from the manufacturer, you can easily make them. Obtain an aluminum cookie sheet that is marked pure or commercially pure aluminum. Measure the thickness of the sheet with a micrometer caliper. In this case, the aluminum is one half millimeter thick. The inherent filtration of this machine is equivalent to one and one half millimeters of aluminum. Therefore, add one half millimeter to bring the total filter up to two millimeters. The diameter of the port is measured. 
A circle which has this diameter is inscribed on the aluminum sheet with the compass. The disc is conveniently cut out with shears. The thickness is one half millimeter. The installation of the filter is a simple matter. The machine now has a total filtration of the equivalent of two millimeters of aluminum. If as much as one and one half millimeters of aluminum have been added, it will be necessary to increase your usual time of exposure by about 40%. Thus, a one second exposure would be increased to one and two fifth seconds. With less added filter, the exposure need not be increased as much. However, the dose to the patient will be decreased to about one half because most of the less penetrating rays shown in red that would be absorbed by the tissues are absorbed by the added aluminum. After installation of the lead diaphragm and the filters, the tube head should be checked for leakage radiation through the tube housing by exposing a cross of dental films. The clear areas outside the dark circle made by the useful beam show there is no dangerous leakage of radiation. Should it occur, ask the machine manufacturer to correct this problem. Other sides of the tube head should also be tested for leakage. The three-foot timer cord on this machine is too short. The cord should be at least five feet long to permit the operator to stand out of the path of the useful beam and where the secondary radiation is within permissible limits. If your X-ray machine has an exposed tube head and an exposed high-tension cable such as these, there is only one thing to do, replace this obsolete and dangerous equipment. Mechanical timers cannot provide the short exposures required for the new high-speed films. Inquire from the manufacturer if it is possible to install an accurate electronic or synchronous motor timer on your old machine that will permit the split-second exposures needed for operating with high-speed films. High-speed film can be used with the slow mechanical timers by doubling the length of the cone. High-speed film can also be used with the slow mechanical timers by reducing the milliamperage. Exposure of the human body to X radiation is biologically undesirable. Therefore, the dentist should make certain that his X-ray machine is giving the minimum radiation to the patient consistent with a good diagnostic cure. How can this be done? Read the handbook. These official handbooks will serve as your X-ray protection for you, your personnel, and your patients. Limit the useful beam area as it strikes the face. To do this, use the proper lead diaphragm to control the X-ray beam area to two and three quarter inches. The useful beam must be filtered adequately. The inherent and added filtration should be not less than the equivalent of two millimeters of aluminum. These filters absorb the useless soft rays that are absorbed by the soft tissue and do not reach the film. Check tube head for leakage. For example, small intense beams escaping through gaps about the port and cone can be shown by exposing some films and the developed films should show no exposed section other than the area covered by the useful beam. Leakage through other parts of the tube can be similarly examined, such as leakage through the end of the tube. Check length of timer cord. The timer cord should be long enough to permit the operator to stand at least five feet behind the tube. High-speed film may be used with old-style mechanical timers if a long cone or reduced milliamperage are used. Remember, it's you, the dentist, who is responsible for the safety of his X-ray equipment 
and for the protection of his personnel and patients from unnecessary exposure to X-radiation.